today we are going to read the last lesson by alphonse dodet alphonse dodet was a french novelist a short story writer the last lesson is a set in the days of franco prussian war 1870 71 in which france was defeated by prussia led by bismarck prussia then consisted of what now are the nations of germany poland and parts of austria in this his story of the french district of alsace and lorraine have passed into prussian hands read the story to find out what effect this had on life at school i started for the school very late that morning and was in great dread of his scolding especially because m hamel had said that he would question of on all of participants and he did not know the first word about them for a moment i thought of running away and spending the day out of doors it was so warm so bright the birds were chirping at the edge of the woods and in the open field back of the swampy the prussian soldiers were trilling it was all much more tempting than the rule for participants but i had the strength to resist and hurried off to school when i passed the town hall there was a crowd in front of the bulletin board for the last two years all our bad news had come from the from the lost battles the draft the orders of commanding officer and i thought to myself without stopping what can be the matter now then as i hurried as by as fast as i could go the blacksmith watcher who was there with his apprentice regarding the bulletin reading the bulletin called after me don't go so fast but you will get to your school in plenty of time i thought he was making fun of me and reached the m hamel's little garden all out of breath usually when the school began there was a great bustle which could be heard out in the street the opening and closing of desks lesson repeated in unison very loud with our hands over our ears to understand better and the teachers were ruler rapping on the table but now it was all so still i had counted on the commotion to get to my desk without being seen but of course that day everything had to be as quiet as sunday morning through the window i saw my classmates already in their places and m hamel walking up and down with his terrible iron ruler under his arm i had to open the door and go in before everybody you can imagine how blushed and how frightened my thing happened m hamel saw me and said very kindly go to your place quickly little french we were beginning without you i jumped over the bench and sat down at my desk not till then when i had got a little over my fright did i see that our teacher had on his beautiful green coat and the little black silk cap all embroidered that he never wore except on inspection and prize days besides the whole school seemed so strange and solemn but the thing that i surprised that surprised me most was to see on the back benches that were always empty the village people sitting quietly like ourselves old houser with his three cornered hat the former mayor the former postmaster master and several others besides everybody looked sad and houser had brought an old primer thumbed at the edges and he held it open on his knees with his great spectacles lying across while i was wondering about it all m hamel mounted his chair and in the same grave and gentle tone which he had used to me said my children this is the last lesson i shall give you <coughs> the order has come from berlin to teach only german in the schools of alsace and lorraine the new master comes tomorrow this is your last french lesson i want you to be very attentive What a thunderclap these words were to me! Oh, the wretches! 
that was that they had put up at the town hall. My last French lesson? Why? I hardly knew how to write. I should never learn any more. I must stop there. Then, oh, how sorry I was for not learning my lessons, for seeking birds' eggs, or going sliding on the saw. My books that had seemed such a nuisance a while ago, so heavy to carry, my grammar and my history of the saints were old friends now that I couldn't give up. <coughs> and M. Hamel too, the idea that he was going away, that I should never see him again, made me forget all about his ruler and how cranky he was. was in honor of this last lesson that he had put on his fine Sunday class and now I understood why the old men of the village were sitting there in the back of the room. It was because they were sorry to that, sorry too that they had not gone to school more. It was their way of thanking our master <coughs> for his 40 years of faithful service and of showing their respect for their country that was theirs no more. While I was thinking all of, of all this, I heard my name called. It was my turn to recite. That would I not have given to be able to say that dreadful rule for the participle all through, very loud and clear and without one mistake. But I got mixed up on the first word and stood there. Holding on to my desk, my heart beating and not daring to look up. I heard M. Hamel say to me, I won't scold you, little French. You must feel bad enough. See how it is. Every day we have said to ourselves, Bah, I have plenty of time. I will learn it tomorrow and how. <coughs> and now you see where you have come out. Ah, that's the great trouble with Alzac. He puts off learning till tomorrow. Now these fellows out there will have the right to say you. How is it? You pretend to be Frenchmen and you can't either speak nor write your language. But you are not the worst. Poor little French, we all have a great deal to reproach ourselves with. parents your parents were not anxious enough to have you learn they preferred to put you to work on a farm or at the mill so as to have a little more money and I have been to blame also have I not often sent you to water my flowers instead of learning your lessons when I wanted to go fishing did I not just give you a holiday Then from one thing to another, M. Hamel went on to talk of the French language, saying that it was the most beautiful language. In the world, the clearest, the most logical, that we must guard it among us and never forget it because when a people are enslaved and as long as they hold fast to their language, as it is, if they had the key to their prison, <clears throat> then he opened the grammar and read us our lesson. I was amazed to see how well I understood it. All he said seemed so easy, so easy. I think too that I had never listened to it so carefully. And what he had never explained everything so much patience, with so much patience. It seems almost as if I, the poor man wanted to give us all he knew before going away and to put it all into our heads at one stroke. After the grammar, we had a lesson in writing. That day M. Hamel had new copies for us written in a beautiful round hand. France and Zion, France and Zion. They looked right. Little flags floating everywhere in the school room hung from the rod at the top of our desk. 
he ought to have seen how everyone set to work. How quiet as it was. The only sound was scratching of the pens over the paper. Once some petals flew in, no, but nobody paid any attention to them. Not even the littlest one worked right on dressing their fish hooks as if that was French too. On the roof, the pigeons cooed very low. I thought to myself, will they make them sing in German, even the pigeons? Whenever I looked up from my writing, I saw M. Hamel sitting motionless in his chair and gazing first at one thing, then at another, as if he wanted to fix in his mind just how everything looked in that little school room. Fancy, for 40 years he had been there in the same place with his garden outside the window and his class in front of him. Just like that. Only the desk and benches had been worn smooth. The walnut trees in the garden were taller and the roof vine that he had planted himself went about the windows to the roof. How it must have broken his heart to leave it all, poor man, to hear his sister moving about in the room above, packing their trunks, for they must leave the country next day. But he had the courage to hear every lesson to the very fast. After the writing, we had a lesson in history, and then the babies chanted their ba baby bo down there at the back of the row, old Hauser had put on his spectacles and holding his primary in both hands, he spelled the letters with them. You could see that too. You could see that he too was crying, his voice trembled with emotion as it was so funny to hear him that we all wanted to laugh and cry. Ah! How well I remember it, that last lesson. All at once the church clock struck twelve. Then the angelus at the same moment, the trumpets of the Prussians, returning from drill, sounded under the, our windows. M. Hamel stood up very pale in his chair. I never saw him look so tall. said he, I, I got something choked him, he couldn't go on, then he turned to the black hole, took a piece of chalk, and bearing on with all this, all his might, he wrote as large as he could, Viva la France, then he stopped and leaned his head against the wall, and without a word, he made a gesture to us, with his hand, school is dismissed to you,